Hello, and welcome to the Notary Business Talk, the podcast dedicated to sharing ideas, strategies, and techniques to help grow your business and improve your life. And now, with more than two decades of notary business experience, your host, Abraham Zamora, the notary entrepreneur. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Notary Business Talk. My name is Abraham Zamora, and I am the notary entrepreneur. In today's, today's episode, we're going to discuss whether making six figures should be your goal as a notary business owner. And, and the reason that I'm bringing up this topic today is because it seems like everywhere we go, and listen, there's a lot of trainers out there, good trainers, some not so good trainers, but there's a lot of trainers. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to decide who we're going to go with and which trainer we should choose to learn this craft of being a notary. Unfortunately, it seems like lately we've been saturated with this sort of promise that being a notary is going to magically make you six figures and it's going to solve all your problems. And I mean, it's one of those things where I, I have a hard time hearing people say that to other people who are really looking for an opportunity to make business, to make a, a career, to generate additional income. And so today we're going to talk about what it actually looks like to have a six figure income notary business and whether that should even be something you should be striving for. If it's something that you should actually be focused on uh, as, as your goal when starting or choosing to grow your notary business. So today, joining us as a guest, as usual, is Ronnie Mickle. And for those of you who don't know, Ronnie's a regular contributor to this show, but I'll introduce you guys again to him because some of you may be new to the show. Ronnie is the original founder and co-owner of Unlimited Inc. Notary, which is a nationwide notary signing service company. And he's also the founder of Notary Stars, which is a website dedicated to helping notaries learn and basically teaches people how to grow their business and become better at notaries. So with that said, Ronnie, welcome to the show. Thank you. I, I love being here. You know, I think we've been doing this for about a year now, uh, a little over a year, I think. Uh, we started filming, you know, it was spotting at the, the beginning and I, I love what you've done with Notary Business Talk and I love the evolution that I've seen. You've really become, you know, a, a beloved guest at Notary Stars. Uh, you know, I, I know our users, I get emails, you know, telling me I love when you guys do podcasts together and, and then they get specific too. like, I love Abraham and all those things. And I, I really think that people connect with you a lot because I believe your heart is pure. Um, you know, our relationship goes back, uh, whether people listening, uh, know or not, when I went nationwide with my company, um, Abraham was the first notary I ever hired on a notary, uh, on a, on a nationwide notary. And I, I called you and said, you cannot mess this up for me. <laughs> you know, like you have to, you have to, you have to knock this out of the park, what you did. And, you know, it spawned a, a long-term relationship between us, uh, as colleagues. And, uh, so, you know, I, I love being here because I've seen, you know, as I've grown as a business owner and as I've grown as a mentor, I've also seen you do the same. And so it just, it's just amazing to see where we both are now, you know, uh, not only running our businesses, but also helping other people. And I, I love that you've stayed like minded, uh, yeah. which brings us to the topic that we're actually going for today, because I think we're uh, really like minded on this as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I, you know, I, now that you said that, it reminded me of when I first started this podcast, which is about, I think about two years ago. And, and just like, every other notary that's out there working day in and day out. I was a regular notary just doing loan signings and this is what I did. And then all of a sudden I, I, I said to myself, you know, I, I'd like to give back. I'd like to, I had a lot of people who helped me and mentored me along the way. In fact, I, I don't know if you remember this, but after that initial conversation we had, it had been really slow for me and, and you had said, Hey, so, you know, and you called me, right? You called me personally here, the owner of a signing company. I'm like, wow. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but you said, Hey, what, what, you know, how's business for you? Thank you for doing this for me. I really appreciate you. And you had like a full blown one hour conversation. I remember I was in the kitchen 
next to the microwave thinking this guy is like calling me and talking to me for an hour and you told me hey you get you know sign up on this platform get this training i think it'll help you with your business and it'll get you more work i did that it worked i was like wow like I want to do what he's doing, right? I want to do what Ronnie's doing, how he reached out and helped me. Didn't ask for anything. Didn't want any money for for an exchange. So that initially inspired me to start doing the podcast. And I've been doing this podcast for over two years, just out of really a hobby, right? I haven't tried. I, if you guys have listened to the show, I haven't tried to. I haven't tried to sell a product or a course at the end of the the meeting. It's been just pure out of trying to help out. But uh, you know, recently I've decided. This, this seems to be really helping people, people out. I, I get the calls. I get the emails. And I think I want to do more of it. I want to be able to help more in this community. And so I, 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 I'm going to announce it now, Ronnie, because it's interesting. Uh, in fact, I, it's to give you a shout out. Recently, as, as of yesterday, I started a Patreon account. And the purpose of the Patreon account is to help any of you who get value out of the show to support my work. I've preached value for value. Trade value for value with people. If you feel you're getting something from them, you should trade that value back, right? So for those of you who have expressed your interest in in adding value back to me, or how can you do something for me? How can you help me? I've I've created an opportunity to do that. And that's my Patreon account. On top of that, I've noticed that this this podcast is sort of a one-way conversation. You guys hear me, you guys hear Ronnie chit-chatting to you guys but it's very one-sided. And so in an effort to try and give you guys an opportunity to have a more meaningful connection with me, I'm going to build a community around this podcast. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash notary, you'll be able to sign up for the community. It doesn't cost you guys anything to sign up for the community. You're going to get regular updates. And just if I feel like talking about something on my phone, I'm going to mention it and you guys will be able to sort of see that on there. For those of you who actually want to support the show and actually help out, and help me financially to continue these shows and be able to add value to you guys, to you guys, then I would encourage you to go check that out. You're going to get extra perks. You're going to be able to, you know, message me directly. You're going to get early access to a lot of these podcasts, maybe a special episodes that only you members will be able to actually listen to and tune into. So I won't talk too much about it, Ronnie, but for those of you who want to help me out and look, get value out of this, wish to support the work that I'm doing. I encourage you guys to go to patreon.com forward slash notary to get more information. And I also want to talk about notary stars before we get into this topic, Ronnie. So a lot of people have been asking me about notary stars and they'll reach out to me and say, well, what does notary stars do? Like, what do they actually teach? And I was thinking, Ronnie, that it might be a good idea if you and I maybe do a video where we sort of let people know what notary stars actually has to offer and that way people can take a look and I can direct them that way. Is that something you'd be willing to do with me, Ronnie? Absolutely. Yes. We can definitely put that on the calendar. Um, you know, in a nutshell, we train on every loan product under the sun uh, through previously recorded videos. We don't just give you a buyer and a refinance or a seller. We go through, you know, if it's signing in a trust, if it's a HELOC, you know, if there's a combination, if it's a split signing, you know, if it's FKA language, you name the scenario. We have already filmed it, and if we don't have it and it comes up, we film it, and we create a class on it. We teach live four days a week. Um, it, we have five sessions a week, teach four days a week, uh, but I would love to share the screen and you know go walk you through this website, because I think sometimes when we get new members, we got 86 new members this month, which is like phenomenal, wow. and we're, you know, that's just in the last 30 days. Um, it's, I think people get here and then they go, I had no idea. Because you go to a website and you're if you're not a member and you don't have that unlocked look at it. So I'd love to just, you know, unlock it, walk through and show what's under the hood and what you actually get, you know, in, in turn for the payment of it. So, yes, we can absolutely schedule that. Let's do that. Let's do that. And also, let me just say something real quick. And I'm going to be able to brag about this for the rest of my life. So Ronnie has officially become a Patreon member and he is supporting the work I do. He's my first member ever. So you have now been bestowed with that honor, Ronnie. And <laughs> since I started Listen, this, uh, I, you, you know, I have to say this, you know, <laughs> I, you gave me a lot of praise before we even started the podcast and not to put you, uh, uh, you know, like you're not special because you are, you're a very good colleague of mine and a very, I consider you a personal friend as well. But I have to say that I always try to invest in anyone 
So if they've ever been on Notary Stars um, and they bring something, I always buy it with my personal funds and check it out. And then I feel like I can then tell people this, go, go do this. Um, when you were explaining things, and I, I want to give you a little bit of an encouragement, you know, this is what being a notary community is all about. Um, lifting up your fellow notary, especially those that are trying to like dig for information and bring it back to you and put it on a silver platter, so to speak, uh, like you like you do. You really work hard at trying to understand things. And, you know, I know that you've utilized your resources at Notary Stars and with Beth and all of those things and other trainers so that you can explain things to people. What you're charging is, you know, a very, very fair rate for the exchange of information. Uh, information is valuable. The more you know, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more you earn is my go-to phrase. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, I'm very proud to invest in you, you know, as a fellow notary for somebody that I see is doing no harm while they're, you know, helping other people. It does cost money to run a business of education. And, you know, unfortunately education can become very expensive for the educator, um, putting things together, putting together episodes, putting together instructors, putting together, uh, you know, staying up late, that needs to be compensated. So, you know, I feel very proud to invest in you. And, you know, that's why I, as often, you know, I know I'm on your platform today, but that's why I give you a chance at Notary Stars, any chance I can to bring you into the fold or the mixer and try to introduce you to other people. Because I feel like as an educator, you are following my personal motto, which is, you know, help, but do no harm. You know, that's, that's the, that's the key because we're not selling the idea <clears throat> of success. We're selling the truth of the industry. And I, I really, really appreciate that about you. And that makes me want to invest in you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate you, Ronnie. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and let's, and that's, that sort of segues way, it segues way uh, our conversation into what we do see out in the industry, right? And we do see a lot of times trainers, there's good trainers, there's bad trainers, there's in, in trainers in between, but it seems like lately, ever since COVID perhaps, we've seen this flood of marketing promising notaries that if they take their course or if they sign up for this or do that, they're going to make six figures and, you know, $16,000 a month and all this. And, you know, when I have conversations with notaries, when I hop on Zoom calls or, or get on the phone with somebody, that's just so far-fetched for a lot of people. And the question is, is that really realistic? And what should be a realistic goal or view of the building a business as a notary, Ronnie, what are your thoughts about sort of the, this idea of promising six figures? Uh, is that, you know, what, what do you, what are your thoughts about that? I guess I could start there. Well, I'll tell you the truth about it. It's absolutely fabricated. Um, <clears throat> the national notary association did a real study, mm -hmm. like the association that we all need to look at. I think it's something around three to 6% of notaries actually only make six figures. And the rest of the people don't. And I, you know, I have a blog article coming out to accompany this podcast that we do. Right. Um, first of all, I want everyone to understand that when you hear the term make six figures, it's being it's pulling on that little heartstring of success. And the, you know, I made ten thousand dollars and I made sixteen thousand dollars, and all these YouTube pop-ups that are getting so many likes and views are usually promoted first with a sponsored ad, and then they get all the likes. There's some of these channels have like ridiculous amounts of followers. Mm -hmm. There's not even that many signing agents in the entire country. Okay? <laughs> okay. They have like tripled the amount of actual signing agents in the country. They're pulling in new members constantly. And these affiliate links, we're living in an age of affiliate marketing. Right. So, you know, I'm not pinpointing anyone out there, not pinpointing any particular course. I know a lot of people think that I do, but I'm not. It is affiliate marketing. Whenever you see those videos and they invite you to, Check the description below. They are selling you something. And when you click on that link, it is an affiliate link. It tracks your phone. It tracks your computer until you buy the product, usually 30, 60, 90 days. And, you know, you can Google the name of a lot of courses and say this course affiliate program, and then you will see them bragging about how much you can make to sell the course. At the current rates of some of the courses, you know, $500 to $800, the person selling you the course is making $175 to $280. In order to reach your Instagram or your TikTok feed, they're only having to pay $50 to get 50,000 views on the on the, the the actual thing. So do the math. 
if I make $280 and I promoted a video for $50, I'm still making $210, which is more than a loan sign agent actually generally makes for an appointment. Sure. So we're living in an age of affiliate marketing and you have to think if there's that much rigor morale, that's a whole business in itself, affiliate marketing. You know, that's not really loan signings. They may have loan signing agent training there, but how, what's the real value of what you're, what you're getting? And then ask yourself, do I need to make six figures? Right. You know, can I make six figures? You know, in the blog, I talk about, I, I mean, I just talked to a notary today, Abraham. She, her biggest goal was to make $5,000 a month. That's not six figures. She said, you know, I just want to make 5,000. You know, I want to do general notary work. I want to do app stills and I want to do loan signings. And she said, you know what? I, I just want to make a comfortable 5,000. That's it. I'm not trying for, you know, 10,000 plus a month. And I, 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 I see a problem in the industry where this whole term make six figures, the six figure notary is starting to make notaries forget about the journey between the day they start and where you could wind up. And my blog, you know, that goes along with this podcast is, you know, the road to success as a notary signing agent is personal. It's a personal journey. You get to decide what the destination is, what your success is. And to me, success as a signing agent is not revolving around a number. It, it just can't because if only three to 6% of people can actually make six figures in real, in reality, then everyone else's goal doing it is going to have to be something different. Right. And there are a lot of retirees in this community, right. a lot of retirees, a lot of college students now that are putting their way through college that don't need to make six figures because they're focused on something else. This is just a good, safe job for them. Um, so why are we forgetting the journey in between of what success is in between? Right. Right. And that's what I'm, I'm really hoping to hash out, you know, here today in the podcast is, you know, success is not a destination. It's a journey. Well, and success, yeah. success can mean stuff, you know, different things for different people. And, and I just got to say this because it's kind of, it's hearing you talk the way you're talking. It, it's, I'm getting emotional, right. In a, in a, in mm -hmm. a negative way. There are people out there like yourself. I like to consider myself as someone who's really trying to help notaries out. And listen, I am somebody who goes out of my way to reach out to people. I, if notary or a notary reaches out to me, emails me, if, uh, instant messages me, I try to get on the phone with them. I, I want to figure out what they're going through. That's why I'm doing this community because I want to connect with you guys. And it ticks me off because I think this attitude about six figures, six figures, six figure notary, six, it's making people like us it's sort of lumping us into this group and it's making us look bad. And, and I'll tell you why, because it's, it's not helping. It's not helping the people who are trying to become successful in this. I, I had a, a guy who I spoke with. He reached out to me. We did an episode a, a few episodes back where I had him on the show. His name's JC. He's from Texas. And we were talking. And I said, hey, man, what's your goal? What are you trying to do with this, right? What is the purpose of trying to start your business? And he's just telling me, look, man, I, I want to have more time with my family. My daughter lives in Florida. I'd like to be able to pay to have her come down here every now and then. I... And she's grown up. I mean, she's an older, she's, you know, in her twenties, her daughter, his daughter, but, and he goes, you know, I work for the state, but I'd like to have something that I could have as a backup in case my job doesn't go well. I don't plan on quitting my job. I want to do this on the side part-time. I said, how much would you like to make every month? He tells me, he goes, $1,500 a month is, would be phenomenal. I said, okay, great. I said, how about we start a little smaller? Maybe start with 500 bucks and let's try and get to that first. The mm -hmm. second I told him that, Ronnie, it's almost like I lifted a thousand pounds of weight off his shoulders. He was like, yeah, okay. That doesn't seem that hard. Sometimes this idea of this promise of making a whole lot of money is just putting way too much pressure on notaries to the point where it immobilizes them to not do anything because it seems so far-fetched. And then they get nothing out of it. And, you know, Abraham... I, I agree with this 100,000%. And the one thing that I want to point out to add on top of that story is there are people who go to four years of college yeah, <laughs> right. for a specialty, you know, and they spend a hundred thousand dollars of, you know, of loans get out and then they don't make that right away because then they have to gain their experience. 
I'm not saying that becoming a notary is turnkey because it's not. No. But it's definitely a lot easier than going to four years of school or eight years of school and then turning around and getting experience. You know, that's a whole decade of life to get into a workforce. Now, can you get into this industry and within a few years hit that six figure mark if you're in the right area, you don't have state laws against you, all of those things? Absolutely. Right. But that's another problem I have is that the whole make six figure mentality has is promised something that is not going to happen immediately. Right. And then, you know, there's this episode of Sex in the City where Charlotte goes, and I wish I knew it verbatim because there's like a speaker there and that she goes and she asks the speaker, it's about all about affirmations and you can get a relationship and other things. But let's, let's say that work is a relationship, right? Okay. And she goes and she asks the speaker, she says, I've been doing my affirmations every day and it's not working. <laughs> and then the speaker says, well, it's, you're not doing them enough. You're not doing them hard enough. <laughs> and I feel like that's what we're creating or some people are creating in the notary industry by saying, Six figures, six figures, pay me $800, you're $900, $1,000, $1,500, and you'll make six figures. Right. That's not how it works. No. It's just not how it works. And it's got to stop. It's really got to, you know, we've got to come back to reality. And you can market, 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 market. <clears throat> but still, the National Notary Association, since this whole six-figure mentality started seven, eight, nine years ago, has come around still only three to six percent of people actually make six figures right and you know during the pandemic we cannot judge this career or this career path um because it was literally a different world right interest rates were at an all-time low not just a reset time low but like an all-time low um they'll never be that way again and we're on our way back for sure um to you know to the greatness of this career and I, I appreciate all the notaries that are still in the industry that didn't give up that are starting to see that come back but we've got to be realistic with ourselves on what success is and i love that we're starting this right here in september this was not planned by the way between you and me or with the viewers but we're now coming up on fourth quarter we have less than 30 days right. before we go into the fourth quarter of the year october november december and that's when we start talking about goal settings. Right. So this is the perfect time. Like this is so serendipitous to me to be talking about what is success and kind of put a mental fix on because next year we're going to go through an election year. Uh, you know, they're trying to get the, the interest rates down. The market's already coming back. Those who are here that are toughed it out are really about to see what the reality of this career can be, which is beautiful, whether you're making six figures or not. Right. Talking about spending more time with your family, talking about having, you know, the money to pay off credit card bills. Um, doesn't matter if you're full-time or part-time, there's a place for you here. And there's plenty of business to go around, but you have to know how to navigate that. And you also need to know what success is. And it's not a monetary figure. Uh, yes. And that, that, that is my point. And we're going to get into what it looks like to be successful and the things we have to do. And we'll touch on those and maybe we'll have follow up episodes on, on the specifics of what we're going to do. But that, that is exactly the point, Ronnie. And I think that success is not measured in money. Money is a means to an end. It's, it gets you something that you really value in life, whether it's fa family time, whether it's extra money, pay off bills or vacations. I'll tell you, Ronnie, I've been doing this for over 22 years now. Out of those 22 years, I've only made six figures, two years out of those 22 years. And I remember working my butt off those two years, right? I mean, I was working. But I'll tell you why I love this career. I was able to homeschool my daughter up until even now she's being homeschooled, right? She's 13 years old now. And this career gave me the freedom, the flexibility, and the opportunity to be able to do that. That to me, Ronnie, my daughter and I have an amazing relationship. I might even have her on the show one of these days. I think that would be fun. We have an incredible... and. And I was able to foster that relationship because of what this business allowed me to do, which gave me that freedom of time to make a full-time income with part-time hours in essence. So let's not focus on the money, people. Let's not focus on six figures or I'm not successful and you're making 90000 80, 30, and you feel like a loser, right? Success means different things for different people. And at this point, I would encourage you to maybe pause this. If you're listening to it, think about what it is 
that you're trying to get out of this business? What does it mean to be successful for you? Not for what anybody else thinks or thinks you should be successful on. You know, Abraham, I just want to tell you what my most successful moment in life was. And I wish I could go back to it. Okay. Um, so I currently live, I've lived in other places, but I currently through how life works, right? Um, live in the building. Like I said, when I make it, I want to live there. Is that right? <laughs> okay. And wow. so funny, um, I live here uh, now, but I went to other places before here that cost more and all these things. But I remember when I lived in my, you know, excuse my language, my, my broke butt apartment, um, you know, back <laughs> in the day, and I was really busting my rear end. I used to drop documents to someone who lived in this particular community. Okay. And I would, they worked at Fidelity and I was one of their direct notaries and I would drop the documents here to them every night that I had gone out and done for their boss. And I was like, God, when I make it, I want to live there. Like, that's the cool place for me. That's the, that's the made it place. Like they, they have a good job. You know, he was making like 95, 110 a year. And I wanted to live there, but I could not afford it at the time, although I was busting my rear end as a, a you know, a notary. And, you know, I wish I could go back. I mean, I'm not wishing that on myself because I love where I live now and I love my salary now, but I, success was actually working. It was knowing what I was doing, having people trust me. Yeah. I was always the early morning guy and success to me was, so my life back then, I lived in a small community apartment that was kind of like Melrose Place and all the neighbors were great. It was kind of like an in-between like, you know, college to adult life apartment. Everyone wound up getting married and moving in with their significant other, like during the whole five years that I lived there. And everyone loved my job, even though they didn't understand it. Because <laughs> I was the guy that woke up at like 7.30, did like three signings, and then came home and sold things on Amazon that I bought in gift shop or thrift shops and stuff. And I would make extra money that way. They didn't know how I worked so little, but I was making more money than them. Right. And I would be at the pool every day at 3.30, 4 o'clock, getting my tan on and drinking a cocktail so that I could get up and, you know, do it again the next morning and do the gym and do all the things, you know. I was living the best life. And, you know, as I climbed the ladder of success, a lot of people go, Ronnie, you're so successful. You know, this big signing agency, you have notary stars, you know, you have your website design business. As I climbed that ladder of success, there were less and less time for my family. Um, I will tell you that part of uh, my divorce was because I didn't have enough time to put into the relationship. Um, you know, and I have no regrets on that. I mean, there were other reasons that we don't want to go down that road. Sure. But I have no regrets of being divorced at this point. I mean, sure, I probably would have been able to sort that relationship out if I had the time, but I didn't have time to put into a relationship. So success sometimes brings things and in, in what other people deem as success brings things into your life that you don't need. I didn't need to give up this much time. And I'm starting now, you have to constantly groom yourself as a business owner. I'm starting to learn to now to be at my desk nine to six and not have to be here. I've got a great team around me, but sometimes you lose things as you get successful and you may not want those. It may not be invited in your life. You right. may just want to be part-time and live by the pool and have a cocktail and visit with your friends and get married and do all the things that lots of people want to do with their lives. Right. And that is success. That is actually, I feel more successful then than I do now, to be honest. And you know, that's something I have to live with because I, I I built this mountain to I climbed the mountain on my own. But when you get to the top, you know what they say, it's lonely there. Yeah. So as you build more money, more problems, you lose. So where is success? And when do you know when to stop with success? Yeah. And that, that's a good question. I, I think the answer is knowing what your values are, knowing what you, you as yourself, as an individual find important in life. You only you can judge that. And let's just be clear and we'll get into the steps of what it means and how we become successful as notaries and we'll do that quickly. But there's nothing wrong with making money. M making money is phenomenal. I mean, making money means you're helping a lot of people and you're just getting paid for that help as long as you're doing it honestly. 
But I think you're right, Ronnie. If you're not clear on what it is you value, whether it's family, whether it's time, whether it's money, money is a value for sure. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then you'll end up just chasing what pe- other people determine as successful, and which is what we're seeing a lot on social media. And that's not necessarily the case for everybody. In fact, it usually isn't. And whatever success means to you is personal, is important, is sacred, and you should treat it that way. But to help you achieve whatever success means to you, let's talk about what we could do, Ronnie, as notaries to to become more successful and whatever we determine to be success. I know we talked about it in your blog. By the way, for those of you who want to check that blog out, you can go to notarystars.com forward slash blog, and it'll also be in the show notes. For those of you who are driving and don't want to have to write that down, you can always go back and get to the show notes. But we were talking about a few things. We were talking about perfecting our craft, researching our market, getting clients, diversifying. Let's let's walk through those, Ronnie. What, what did you mean by uh, that when in, in relationship to building your business and being successful as a notary? So the very first thing is, you know, I, I encourage notaries to stop watching YouTube and okay. listening to Facebook <laughs> to start researching their market, right? YouTube videos are designed to sell you things. Self included, you included, we're all selling something, right? Sure. To be honest, yeah. let's just lay it out. YouTube videos that say, I make this much, this much, this much, get those out. They're just trying to sell you something. What you want to do is analyze. The first thing is, am I in a good area for this? You know, and even if you're in a bad area, like with only a few notaries, that's okay. But you want to analyze your population. You know, the bigger the city, the better the opportunity it's going to be for you to, if you want to hit six figures, to hit six figures, or if you just need extra money to hit, hit those goals. Right. The smaller the population, it's going to be harder. And you're probably going to, the, the lower your population goes, the more opportun- uh, the more chances you are going to need a second job or something else to rely on. It's not going to be uh, that great for you. So you want to analyze your 25 mile radius because that's about what the average notary is willing to char- to travel. And usually only the ones further out are willing to go up to 25 miles. If you're in a highly populated area, your bubble is going to be smaller. Yeah, because traffic and stuff. You know, (laughs) you live in Los Angeles, it's 45 minutes around the block just at lunchtime. (laughs) You know, so. You got a five mile radius there. That's the first thing is just analyze, you know, your populations. Smaller areas don't necessarily mean to do bad. I know people who live up towards Sedona and Flagstaff, and it's very touristy with ski resorts and, you know, uh, people traveling and those notaries do really well because the people traveling sign things while they're gone, you know, they're closing on real estate because let's face it, rich people have money to travel and sign while they're gone. So being in a tourist area is also really well, but I also encourage notaries to go to notaryresume.com. This is like part two of that. Okay. And put in your zip code where you physically live and look at how many notaries are around you. The more you see, the more opportunity you have, okay? You may think that, you know, I mean, sure, you're going to have competition, right? but how good is the competition? You know, if you see 20, 30, 40 notaries, that's not a lot. There are 625 notaries who have their profiles filled out properly within my mile radius, mm-hmm. within my 25 mile radius. And I do just fine. And when I lived in LA, there were even more. Um, so... The more the more faces you see doing the actual job, you know, it's a good the sign. More opportunity, yeah, it's yeah. definitely a good sign. Yeah. If you're in a rural area, don't let that turn you off either, no. because that means you could probably make bank charging more if you're the only one of three. Yep. And what I've noticed is that a lot of times when there's only like three to twenty, they all have part time jobs, and so depending on when your part time job is, you might work at night and be available all day, or work in just the evening and be available all day for closings so you can charge a little bit more because you're the only one right um so you have to to be able to think about these things like logically not just tell let someone tell you that you're going to make so much money the third thing abraham is and this is something that i've always done when i move to a new area is i just pretend to be a member of the general public and i contact other notaries and i ask them you know like how much would it be for a single document and then i Like if I'm in Phoenix, I would call Scottsdale and ask, you know, how far would it be? How much would you charge me to travel here? 
Colette Levine and ask all the areas around and get a depiction of different documents and I-9 and all these things. And then you don't have to book the appointment. You can just call and ask how much are you charging so you can get a viable idea of what you can actually charge in your area. Right. And kind of you want to come in with a price that's undercutting but also has value for you. Right. One thing that I think people don't do enough of is contacting like title and escrow and realtors and asking like, what do you look for in a notary? Do you have a signing service? What do you, what do you require in order to work with your company and how, what do I need to do to have you trust me with your work? You know, instead of calling and asking for work, interview them. And, and, and ask them, what do I need to do to prove to you that I care about your business and that want to help your business grow by being a vendor for your business? Right. You can't always just call and ask for work. Sometimes you have to call and say, how, how can I help you? Like, like seriously, tell me, like, do you want me to take more training? Do you want me to, you know, uh, come and learn about you and your clients? Do you want me to, you know, sit in with you on some signings? Uh, do you want, you know, do you want to go to lunch and tell me about your kind of clientele? Everybody has a different kind of clientele. Some title companies go for like high end million, million dollar properties. Some of them go for people flipping houses. Some of them uh, only do reverse mortgages, mobile homes, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you need to learn how to talk to your clients and say, what do you need from me? What kind of training do you need to know? What kind of files do I need to expect from you? Um, you know, should you ever want to work with me? And Take that away. Don't ask for work right then and there. Take that away and make sure you have it the next time you come and say, you know what? I took what you said and I really went and looked at you know, my resume and now I have a resume that I'd like to turn into you. I've done that three times and gotten three clients out of it. Yeah. Now, that's before we took off. When I started taking my resume seriously. Um, Let me tell you something about that. So I just had Kendra Lewis on the show, uh, the, the, the episode right before this. And that's one of the things she was saying is, when trying to get direct business, it's about building relationships. It's about making the time to get to know them and understand their pressure. I mean, she was saying how, you know, the title gets blamed for everything from everyone. And they're under so much pressure. And to have a notary come in and that, that they can feel truly understands them and is trying to look out for them. This is one of those ways, right? To figure out what can I do for you to make your life easier in a sense, I think goes a very long way. So I just wanted to point that out. It was it's a point that Kendra made, and I think it's a great point you're making. It's now. it's a it's amazing. Um, before we go to that number five, there, I, I want to tell you this, and I think this is uh, you know goes right along the same vein. There is that when you walk into a title company, right? Like let's just take title companies because you can walk into an attorney, you can walk into things. When your course says you know make six figures, and that's their thing. Like Notary Stars, our theme is signing agent excellence. Right. Like we want to provide you excellence. When you walk in and you say, you know, I'm here to make six figures. Can you give me work? <laughs> Do you have any work for me? That's not a resume. No. And it's not a good resume. It's not a good look. And we've talked about this before. Desperation is not a good look. I know we all need to make money, but we also need to realize what we're doing here. As a signing agent, especially when we're working in title and escrow, we are an extension of someone's book of business. Their book of business is how realtors get paid. They are how they get paid. That's how they put a roof over their head. And you can't just walk in and fake it till you make it. If you sign the wrong client, the wrong realtor changes title companies, they lose their book of business. They lose their job. Yeah. And, and there, you know, that's why we are so adamant about signing agent excellence and how important it is, even if you're part time. And that'll yeah. kind of lead into the next point is you have to decide, you know, that step number five of, you know, analyzing this industry is deciding, are you a part time notary? Are you a full time notary? Or are you a seasonal notary? And yes, seasonal notaries are a thing. I tell you, being a notary at the end of the year where there's a lot of business um, is is equally as valued and even better than wrapping presents at the mall, <laughs> which is a thing for the retirees. <laughs> sure. But no matter what level you're doing it, doesn't matter if you're going for $10,000 a, a year or a hundred thousand plus a year, being as excellent at your job is, is that never ending tank of gas. That's going to get you to your, and I said, there's no destination. It's going to, it's going to be the never ending tank of gas. That's going to take you on your journey. Right. Being excellent at your job, knowing all the loan products, you know, understanding general notary work, 
um, knowing how to fill out a notarial certificate, all of those things, you know, that we teach under the roof of Notary Stars for the low, low price of $29.95 a month, $59.95 a month if you want to uh, do the, you know, the marketing as well. Um, you have to know your job. It still comes back to that. And, you know, I don't know about you, Abraham, but this career has given me everything I've ever wanted. Sure. It, everything I've ever wanted and more. Sometimes too much of what I wanted. I mean, I've learned to settle myself down, uh, you know, in my older age here. Don't let the beard dye and Botox fool you and the Zoom filter. I mean, I'm all <laughs> man under, under all these layers. <laughs> but it's given me everything I've ever wanted and more. And I want that for more notaries. And sometimes when I say everything I've ever wanted and more, at the time of my life when I only did two or three signings a day and was at the pool, and got to spend time with friends and meet someone and get married. That was success for me. That was all I really ever needed was to just be comfortable and live in a place that was healthy. And I miss that, you know, now that I climbed into this level of success, sometimes I look back and go, maybe I should have stopped there, hmm. you know, but I felt that pressure pushing me, hmm. you know, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to, gain more success, gain more success. And I traded a lot for success. So, and I'm learning to balance it now. I have a great business coach and I have a great, you know, uh, personal therapist and all those things. But I have to tell you, success, what got me to that level and to this level, whether it be the Ronnie that sat by the pool after 3.30 and enjoyed his neighbor's company and got to date and do all of those things or the Ronnie that, you know, stays up from five to 3 a.m. sometimes working. What got me to any level that I wanted to be at was knowing my job, like the back of my hand. Absolutely. That's, that's first and the, foremost. That's, that's how I got to any of those levels. Yeah. And, 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 and let's leave it at this Ronnie, because I think this is a good point to finish at. It doesn't matter how many notaries we have in the industry. It doesn't matter how many notaries you find on notaryresume.com in your area. If you, and I think this is a takeaway, right? And, and, and success and making money are not the same thing. We need to make sure that there's a difference between that, right? Absolutely. Amen to that. Yeah, it's not the same, right? And making lots of money doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy and, 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 and full of joy. Success should be, should be pursuing joy and happiness in your life, whatever that means to you. But knowing your craft, if you do what Ronnie, and, and I think that's why Ronnie did Notary Stars, right? And I've heard such good things about Notary Stars, Ronnie, and I can't wait for us to do that review video of, of what you have to offer. But the, um, the, the way you're able to teach people in a simplistic way to help them get better at their craft is, is going to, you'd be amazed, Ronnie, at how many bad notaries there are out there. That And I'm sure you know this, but look, we'll leave you with this. In your business as notaries, your first goal should be to perfect your craft and have pride in what you do. You will beat 80% of most notaries if you simply answer your phone and do a good job when you're notarizing something. That's it. You can dismiss the other 80% in my opinion. Once you can figure that out, then I think Ronnie's absolutely correct. You will be, what's the saying? Uh, the, 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 the good goldfish always float to the top or something like that. But anyway, the point is master your craft and you'll, you'll never be without a job in my opinion. So, um, but anyway, Ronnie, that's really good. Anything you want to wrap up with Ronnie before we take off? Uh, yes. You know, I, I also want to suggest that you and I do another podcast soon about marketing the notary okay. business because now we kind of talked about success and i think no matter what level you're on you always need to know how to market you know for the business and i wrote this in the blog and i hope people uh, will read it but you know marketing your business no matter what level you want to be at right it's kind of like farming you know let's take it back to a simpler job and or actually that's not a simple job it's a hard job <laughs> but um Difficult. take it back to a simpler time before all the you know the ability to do what we do now. Um, if you don't plant seeds, then you're not going to eat in the future. And marketing is a lot like farming. Yes. You know, you have to plant the seeds for what you want to come back to. And so, you know, I do have a marketing course and all those things, but there are some things that I'd like to talk about 
when it comes to marketing, because I feel like notaries are being drowned by all these six figure videos and they're forgetting that they need to market their business and drown out those videos. You know, there, I think a lot of notaries competitors are the videos about becoming a notary out there. And I've actually seen title and escrow officers that would rather go to snap docs and pay $60 a signing because they're sick of notaries bragging about how much they make. Seriously, there are, you don't want to walk in. Most escrow officers don't make six figures. So why are you going to go in and be on a YouTube channel and brag about how much money you make and then walk in and tell, you know, uh, a title and escrow officer that they need to give you work. Wait, that's a thing, Ronnie. People actually do this. No, absolutely a thing. Yes. We, I actually have an escrow company that told me that is the one reason that they use snap docs because they want to put it out for the cheapest amount possible because they, if she actually said, if I have to tell one more of my escrow officers that the notary is making more money than they are, it, it you know, I can't do that. And so <laughs> it, 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 it is, you, you've got to be careful with, getting on the internet and bragging about money. So I would love to talk about taking back that conversation as a notary and using the internet to educate your clients. Number one, to, number one, to get found, but number two, using social media to drown out the noise of make six figures and bring more customers to yourself. I think we should be using social media, media as a collective to talk about the products and services we can offer the general public, why we're important for the general public. Um, also um, talking about, um, you know, our experiences as loan signing agents and, and, you know, what we can do during that experience for the title companies. We need to be making more to combat all these courses. And everybody thinks that you have to have like this outgoing personality. In my course, I teach how to do it with Canva and you don't even have to be on camera. Right. Um, you, you know, so I'd love to do an episode with you on that as well. I know that we're going to talk about doing a walkthrough of notary stores, but I'd love to give some words and wisdom advice about marketing your notary business to your viewers as well. Absolutely. And what we'll do is uh, for those of you who are Patreon members, we'll put a poll out and we'll kind of figure out what exactly about marketing you guys would like to learn and know about. And then uh, based on that, we'll figure out what would be the best topic for that. But I think that would be phenomenal in terms of marketing. And I'll say this about marketing. We'll end it at this. I think marketing is ultimately has two purposes. One is to let people know who you are. And what you do so that when they're ready to buy from you, to use you, to get you to do the work for them, they know where you're at. Your job is just, just let them know you exist. Not to get them to buy from you or use you, but just, so just your job is just for them to know you exist. They'll come to you when they are ready. And that may mean you may have dropped off a business card or you may have done a social media post and you may not see the results of that until a year, two, maybe three years later. But that's okay. That's the, that's a part of what Ronnie was just saying about planting seeds. It doesn't grow overnight. It takes time. And part of your job while your prospects are getting to know who you are, not using you, but maybe in the future, is to build trust and get them to like you. But if you're pushing them, if you're using high sales tactics, if you're being aggressive, do you think anyone's going to like and trust somebody who's doing that with them? Absolutely not. So your goal is to be, be honest, come across as genuine, and wait and be patient for them to be ready to use you when they're ready. If you take that attitude about marketing, it changes everything in my opinion. What do you think, Ronnie? I think that absolutely. I just talked to Travis about this earlier today. If you guys don't know, Travis is my business partner, but uh, you know, he said, you have that magic, you know, you're able to sell like to our clients and, and we were talking <laughs> about, you know, all our sales reps and everything and how well we've done this year. And, and uh, I, I told Travis, I said, yeah, but you know, it's the one that I have a client that, they told me like, don't come here anymore. We're not going to use you. Yeah. And I had planted that seed and it was about a year after that conversation that their assistant went and worked at one of the offices we do service for like a cover. And she came back and said, we will either use them or I'm going to quit because this office runs so much better using this service. And they started using us and I had planted the seed, you know, like, 
they might have gone over and not known who we were, but they were like, no, this guy really does do what he says he's going to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, um, I want to get I want to get us uh wrapped up. I know we could go on and on and on, <laughs> but you know, it is about planting seeds with marketing Absolutely. and it's you reap what you what you sow, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, this is not a turnkey business, you know, it 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 is very little investment. The training is very little compared to, you know, it takes, doesn't take that long to become an excellent signing agent, but you do have to train. You have to train legitimately on lots of different things and then marketing, you know, you do have to market. If you're going to survive off signing agencies, you won't survive very long. You have to know how to market yourself to signing agencies, direct title to the general public, um, to attorneys, to all of the things that you can do with that notary stamp. Um, and if, if you have other things interwoven with that, great, but you have to know how to market. You have to make those efforts absolutely. hard. You won't get a return. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good stuff. Great, great way to end it. And I want to share one last thing. A lot of people don't, might not know this, but Ronnie and I, you know, we're business partners. We do these podcasts. We've actually never met in person, believe it or not. We're on the phone and in, on camera zooming all the time. But my wife, her birthday's coming up. She wants to go to Sedona. So I said, you know what? What an amazing opportunity to go visit Ronnie and Travis. So pretty soon, I think you guys will see a selfie of us finally together in person. I'm so excited. So Ronnie, I can't wait to uh, to uh, have lunch. I'm gonna have to get like a Mac makeup artist to come over and make me look like I, I like I do on Zoom with a with a filter. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find like a little glass that I can hold around and be like, "Hey, Abraham, this is the guy that you think you're meeting." Oh, no. <laughs> Stop it, Ronnie. Anyway, well, hey guys, I really appreciate you guys tu- tuning in. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, stay tuned for a marketing episode that Ronnie and I will probably have in the future. And until next time, take care. Be well and stay productive. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Notary Business Talk. To learn more about becoming a notary entrepreneur or to find out how Abraham can help you achieve your business goals, visit notarybusinesstalk.com.